Hey guys, uh, Spikey here for another ranked game commentary. Uh, today we've got Jay Scales here playing uh, Full Faction Sundered Lands against uh, SheB23 playing Forgalar Swamp Shattered Peaks Split Faction. Uh, I believe, yeah, Jay Scales is going first down here. That's how that works, I guess. I don't know, it's been a while since I played, so, uh, shut up. Anyways, uh, we'll see what J Scales decides to do. These guys are both, uh, both in legendary, both in, you know, above a thousand rating, so I figured they'd be decent enough to, uh, to watch. Plus, I know J Scales can make the occasional, uh, uh, decent move. I've seen him pull some pretty cool stuff. Starting off with the Skizik Arthromancer immediately going for mid font. So he's going to try and force a rush or something, possibly, out of Sheepy there. We'll see if Sheepy just decides, well, screw you, I'm just going to go for my fonts, and you can have mid font. I'll just fight back for it here in a little bit when you go take your font. It looks like he's not. He's sending the Voltaic Slag, who's, uh, he's going to be able to get in there get that grid up. I mean, he'll be able to get in there, but uh, he won't be able to attack, and this Anthromancer will be able to attack. So, I mean, he's kind of just uh, setting it up to work out well for him. I mean, he's only got, you know, seven damage, but he'll probably go in there and uh, uh, drop that hive after like engaging that or almost engaging it or something. I guess we'll have to see uh see what else he deploys where he's going. Now another possibility is that he might have just had shit draws, so he's like, alright, well fuck it, I'm just gonna go for it. And probably straight ahead, or uh, one of these two spots would probably be his, his best option for where to put that, but that's a decent enough spot too. See, that's not quite where I, I would have put that, because now he's got that font in between him and this far zone, whereas if he had been there, he wouldn't have had to go around the font in any sense. He's got the Demonic Sand Claw down who is, I believe, a new rune. Creep and Crawl. So he's running probably an arthropod insect type deck. Got empowered speed. So he's got extra speed until he attacks. That's kind of cool. Oh, and when he does attack, he gains speed. He, wow, he's kind of badass. I kind of really want that. I'm not sure if I have any of those. I bought a box. Um, I'm not sure you know how much else we're getting. That was probably not the best place to put that hive because he can just attack that. I mean come on. He's got his uh, thunder fist there getting ready to move in. But, I mean seriously come on. Seriously J Scales you, you're better than that. Probably. You know, had he been there instead he would have been able to uh, drop that hive like right up there and having moved up there, you know, force him kind of out of the font to to attack things. Though that was kind of pointless, getting the distract on him since he already used his hive and locust swarm. So he's just going to be attacking now. That's all he's going to be doing. So he'll probably move like right up there and start, uh, you know, wailing on that thing. And he didn't even move it outside of the hive range uh, and drop a relic or anything. So I mean, that was kind of a kind of a poor move. He did drop his fire bomber though. Take that side font. So he'll be up, you know, two fonts to one because J Scale still hit, here has still ignored uh, this font. He is, though, bringing in the Sand Claw. 
to kind of help with things, and he's deciding, I guess, just to pull back the Anthromancer, which means that uh, he's just going to smack that hive once and kill it, and then smack him once after moving up a space. But, okay, I mean, you know, whatever. His move, I suppose. And that is a real hive, so I guess it will uh, still contest the font. But as soon as he kills it with his one shot, it'll, uh, you know, it'll be fine. Because, I mean, it's at the perfect range for him to just attack it and have it do damage. There's the Sand Spitter. He may be playing more of a sand deck. Like a sand insect sort of deck. I mean, it's still, uh, you know, arthropods, so still insects, but I'm just, you know, they're... Sand spitters kind of tend to work better in sand decks. Though th th that said, they are really nice having that ranged creep and crawl like that. See, there's the banner that he should have dropped. Why did he... Okay, so... Oh, because he got poisoned because he didn't kill that. See, there's his issue. There, now he's in the font with the Thunder Fist, and it's going to switch to his font. It's now 3 to 1, soon 3 to 2, I suppose, because he's taking his font over there. And then he's going to start just bringing that in and start pinging things. If he's, you know, if he knows what he's doing, I suppose. Uh, what else we got? We got the Fire Bomber obviously taking that font. He's getting ready to start putting pressure on this one. Or at least help out with this one. Because he's got flying, so he's got that nice... You know, he actually has a choice there. And then he even has the 1 to 3 range, so he doesn't even have to fully cross over to start smacking things that are in this font. I mean, if they're in these four spots, then he can hit them from these three which is, you know, this lined up right with where he is. He wouldn't even have to go off course in any sense. He's got the uh, Acid Dartwing here. A lot of, uh, a lot of Dissipate going down this game. Uh, he's also got Brood Bond, so, I mean, they may be starting uh, the, uh, the mix engine here pretty soon. I guess we'll just have to see. I mean, he uh, can't really hit him with that, or, well, that at range. But uh, he's got, you know, decent counters for elusive, so I'm not entirely sure that was the best drop. Um, I would have gone for probably another thing along the lines of the Sand Spitter. Possibly another uh, Anthromancer for another Hive. I don't know. It's a decent enough move, I suppose, getting some range out there. Uh, there's the, uh, the Dream Crusher, by the way, with uh, the double jab. Huh. Interesting. Uh, guild chat going, of course. Of course, hoops there. Being hoops. And he just decided to leave that Thunder Fist kind of back there. Making him kind of come to him. And he can move up and attack him, but that also puts him in range of that uh, Dream Crusher. Well, I mean, he just has to move up a space, and he would just have to move back like a couple spaces for the slag. Moving the Sand Spitter up. I mean, it's, it's two fonts to two fonts now, but it was really convoluted to get to that point. And it could have been done way better, I think. Now he's pulling back the uh, the sand claw because it's been getting smacked. It's uh, got two stacks asunder. Or is that one one thing asunder? Yeah, one thing asunder for two more turns. I play this game. Shut up. Uh, then we got Locust here deployed with uh, Leap 2, Hidden Sand. One of the decent enough uh, builds on it. 
So he's going to go stealth at the end of the turn. But, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious where he is after he moves, unless he moves to sand. And, of course, I'm just ignoring global chat because, I mean, there's just an effort and futility there to try and really, you know, shut that up kind of thing. Now, I'm not sure if he's planning on moving all the way up. Um, he's within attack range still of that dart wing, but it's full distance attack range, so it's, you know, kind of only like a 9 damage attack. Plus, he's got evasive, so it only would be like, uh, like 7 or 8 damage or some bullshit like that. Uh, he is, I suppose, staying pretty clear of that. But, I mean, he, he could still move up another space and be fine. He's just wasting AP staying back that far. Um, what's he planning on doing? He's got elusive on that, so I mean, he would he can just kind of run on up with that Thunder Fist. He's going to pull it instead to get the double tap. There, now he can just move up to there. Do that kind of business. You can do that, and if he's got another one, he can kill the Sand Claw and the Dart Wing. I think he's instead just going to go for the Fire Bomb to kill that, and then he might grab the globe. No, just drop the Sacred Temple on it, I suppose. Um, okay. <laughs> now he's getting cleansed at the end of every turn, uh, and he's got a. I really think that Sacred Temple's bullshit, because it's, it's fucking 20 goddamn Nora, and it has 30 fucking health. Like, it's just, as a font contest rune alone, it's ridiculous, but it also cleanses. Like, it's just kind of ridiculous. But, you know, whatever, it's Forgalar Swamp, they can do whatever the fuck they want, apparently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what Sheepy here is running. It might just be some level of meta deck, because these are all runes that I would consider at least meta worthy. Oh, there's the, uh, what's it called? Burning Sands. Going in to try and uh, do that. There's the Sand Spray. I mean, he's got some decent damage done to that temple there. He should What he should have done is he should have gone in and done the sand spray first. Because then he would have gotten that DOT on the, uh, the Thunder Fist. And it would have, uh, between that and the Hive and the Poisoned. See, that would have been, what, five and... Oh, it's okay, he brought that in and kicked its ass because he's got, uh, Blood Frenzy. And really, good lord. There he's doing the other font thing to kill that and that. <laughs> I mean, that was a decent power turn from J Scales there to take out those guys. But then just the immediate counter there to kind of take out some of his power turn enablers. Uh, there's the Hippo Stampede. He's going to take out probably this Anthromancer real quick. Figure, you know, just kind of come on in with these guys, smack him. Hit him with that, and then he's going to take him out with the Dream Crusher. Assuming he can do enough damage, I believe. Yeah, he's got the damage. Just barely, but he's got the damage. Then grab those globes. He's in that font. And he can just go and take that font. Or, well, not take it, but contest that font. Um, so that means a decent move, but uh, J Scales is also in that font next turn. Which is important to remember. 
So he's taking that font and deciding to try and block him. I mean, he can still leap in and, you know, grab that globe or some shit. You know, grab the globe and then kind of move over and engage the Dream Crusher if he wants to. Which is probably what he'll do. Maybe drop a relic or some shit. And there he is grabbing the globe. And then inside or outside. He does have hidden sand. So he won't actually be engaging it. But it will make it so that he would have to be bumped into in order to be attacked by that fire bomber. And he's not going to bump into it with that Dream Crusher because then he would be engaged to it. So, I mean, the, the Fire Bomber would actually have to physically move over to get that Locust if he wants to also hit it with the Dream Crusher. But he also did just lose his font over here, Sheepy did. And then there's the Brood Lord coming in to kind of be a badass up here. So now it's three fonts to one. Uh, J scales favor so he probably just uh, just turned the game like that I mean after his power turn that kind of resulted in the dud power turn back apparently he's not deciding to attack with the dream crusher even though he could have um, letting J scales keep that font there's the other brood lord Cause he's getting shitloads of Nora now. He's getting what, uh, fucking 81 Nora a damn turn, is that right? Cause you get, what, 12 from each of these, and we get like 45 now from the shrine. It's ridiculous. But, uh, he's getting good deploys there. Big tanky deploys right there in, uh, in the damn font like the near font to his zone like shit man there's the game yep he knew he was he was done for at that point so uh yeah anyways i hope you guys enjoyed that video i'll see you next time